Hi everyone, so this is lesson three, oops, change of this, uh, of the differentiation two pack to do with trig. Um, it says trig proof, but I think this first example isn't really proof, it's more just finding numbers, and the, uh, the one for you is like it's more of a show pattern. But we do do a little bit of proof later on. Right, so let's have a look at this question. Um, these questions are quite intense, but you should be getting a feel for using differentiation and using trig. There's a lot of different equations you've got to remember. Sorry about that, um, we'll just do the best we can do. Plenty of practice, makes it easy. So part A says, prove that the derivative of secant is secant tan. Now we have choices. What I could do, so one choice, is to see it as y equals one over cos x, and use the quotient rule. The other choice is to see it as cos x to the power of minus one and do the chain rule. Now, the quotient rule, the equation for the quotient rule, came from doing the product rule with something with a power minus one. Like one term and then another term power minus one. So we've got a choice really. It shouldn't tell us which method to use because this is the idea of our linear is that you kind of go off and give it a go. So I'm going to go with the chain rule for a chain. So part A. So I've got y equals cos of x to the power of minus 1. Now we do absolutely shed loads of differentiating. Absolutely shed loads of recapping about the, the product rule and the chain rule and the quotient rule. Well, let's just have a look at this. Remember, if you're doing the chain rule, we differentiate the second function, the, the inner function, and because it's a cos one, I'm just going to write this down so I remember. Always write it down and just make sure you get the signs right. So cos goes to minus sign. So I've got minus sign x. And then, so I've differentiated the inner bit, and now I differentiate the outer bit. So what I've got is a bracket to the power of minus 1. So I do minus 1, the bracket, to the power minus 2. So if I tidy that up a little bit, dy by dx is, it's going to be minus and minus is a plus, I've got sine x times by cos squared x. Well, actually, cos squared to the minus. Well, hang on, let me write this better. So it's cos x to the power minus 2. So let me get rid of that there. Uh, so it's times by 1 over cos squared x. Now I want, if you look at the answer, I want secant and I want tan. So I want a 1 over cos x times by a sine x over cos x. And if you look, if I split the cos squared up as a cos x times a cos x, I can rewrite this whole thing as a sine x over cos x times by 1 over cos x, which then becomes a tan x times by a secant x. And I wanted it to be secant tan and that's part A done so that's about that bit there done Fitting. part B says given that y equals e to the 2x uh, secant 3x differentiate it so part B is kind of like moving on from part A so let me put a line here because I don't think I've got a here if I do it I have to start it here at the bottom so y is e to the 2x secant 3x. Right, so I've got product rule now. I've got two bits multiplied together. And if you remember, with a product rule, I do first bit, second bit differentiated, plus second bit, first bit differentiated. So I've got that first and one of two rules, haven't I? Right, so I can do this in my head. Kind of, because I've got the, the I've got this bit from part A. Just be careful with the three. So dy by dx. 
So B to the 2 x is the first bit, times by the second bit differentiated is secant x tan x. But I've got secant 3x. So if I was differentiating that, the 3x would give me a 3 at the front, and then I've got everything, but I need to make sure I put the 3x is in there. And we don't really like that, but it's just a practice thing. So that's second bit differentiated, plus the second bit, which is secant 3x, multiplied by the first bit differentiated. So if I differentiate e to the 2x, I differentiate the 2x, stick it at the front. 2e to the 2 up to the 2x there. There's not really much I can do there to kind of tidy it up. I might put the e to the 2 axes at the end. So I've got 3 secant 3x tan 3x plus, oh no, I've got the e, e, the e on the end there. e to the 2x. So it looks like a massive equation. 2 secant 3x e to the 2x. So that's my part B done, my differentiator. It looks quite messy, but it's not too bad. Right then, let's have a look at part C now. So part C says, the curve with the equation, let's give me some numbers I can work with, has a minimum turning point at A and B. Find the values of A and B. So I'm looking at the stationary point. So I'm looking where dy by dx is zero, so that big equation, I'm going to put equal to zero. Hang on. Can I get it all on one page? That's the thing. Let me, uh, so 3 secant tan. So 3 secant 3x tan 3x e to the 2x plus, was it 2 secant 3x? Yeah. 2 secant 3x x e to the 2x is equal to zero. Now, what I need to do is do some factorising. For me to do stationary points, I need to factorise. I've got quite a few factors here. I've got the E, and I've got the secant there. So they're what I'm going to pull out as a factor. Hang on, change the colour first. So I'm going to have a secant 3x, I'm going to have an e to the 2x. I'm going to have a massive bracket of everything else that's missing. So secant 3x, e to the 2x, leaves me 3 times 3x. Secant 3x, e to the 2x, leaves me plus 2. So it's not as bad as we thought. Each one of these bits gets its own stationary point. So secant 3x is 0, e to the 2x is 0, and 3 tan 3x plus 2 is 0. So I've got three separate factors, and that's important, the factors, which we don't like doing. So secant is 1 over cos. And that's equal to zero. Now, if I think of zero as zero divided by one, then when I flip everything, it kind of gives us an idea. And let's go back in blue. So I've got, if I flip everything upside down, I've got cos 3x is one over zero. Now, that's looking where the asymptotes are. So it's a divide by zero. But there are no asymptotes, so there's no solution there. So that's that one done. e to the 2x is 0. That's got no solution because e to the 2x is bigger than 0 from the picture of the graph. Put it up like that. So what I have got now to look at is this 3 times 3x plus 2. So if I rearrange it, take the 2, divide by the 3. Now that's going to give me, if I work it out, it will give me an x value of minus 0.196 if you work it out, which in turn would give a y value if we sub it back into the original equation of 0.812. Now, massively running out of time, um, there is a question for you on the next page. I'll put it on the next one. But that's my, that's my A, that's my B. Okay.